Yo guys, it's JJ here, and today I'm going to be breaking down how to make a hard Detroit beat for artists like, you know, Real Boston Richie, Rob49. But before we get into it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. As you can see, we're on the way to 1,000 subs. I mean, it's a big deal for me trying to hit it before Easter. It's a long way away, but... A, appreciate the love and second of all all the drum sounds that i am using in this video will be linked in the description down below and they are for free you heard me boy so now let's get into the video first things first obviously to detroit beat is super hard super dope so we're going to be doing this at a 158 bpm and of course first thing you need to know we are using a expand 2 vst with the preset green guys which is from the soft pads bank when we're making these beats we want to keep it simple and dark of course so as you can see from the pattern i've made it's essentially a four bar just looped over for a full eight and let me just break it down it's essentially just this if i take these notes up we can see we've got ourselves essentially just a minor chord going on here but all i do is just play with the notes about because as you can see from these notes here and these notes here they are one semitone apart from each other and because of that they are part of this like whole dark vibe it gives it a nice little bit of tension creating that atmosphere for what we want for these Detroit beats. But as I've just stated before, I originally just started with these chords, but then I just took the top line and took it down an octave. And without further ado, this is what the melody sounds like. And there we have it. For the first sound that we used, I got myself a nice Pro Q3 EQ. And all I did was just carve a lot of the lows, ducked a few of the highs, and then just reduced the frequency that I found a bit harsh. Next up, I got myself an instance of Valhalla Vintage Verb and added a fair amount of reverb, you know, just to give it that ambience, a bit of reverb, you know, widen the sound a bit, keeping it dark, of course. So these are the presets that I used. And then last but not least, I stereo separated the sound 36%. You know, just to widen the pad out a bit so it's not in your face. I like to have it a bit mixed in. Because it's a Detroit beat, we got ourselves the bell sound. And of course, we all know what this bell is the tubular bell, the yeet bell, whatever you want to call it. Very simple pattern. I pretty much play it where I have like, 808s would go. So obviously on the one. And then, of course, a half step up up here. And then just loop the full eight. Then just loop it for a full eight bar. So this is what the bell sounds like. And there we have it folks so for the belt we've got ourselves a basic eq cutting off a few of the high frequencies and a lot of the low frequencies and i didn't stereo separate the sound at all because i want the belt to be like in your face next up we got ourselves an instance of contact seven and i am using the bank known as the strings of winter and this is the preset i have chosen just so you're aware contact seven is obviously an expensive plugin so if you guys can't afford it or you don't have that an alternative in my opinion expand to omnisphere they are both really good but i really recommend expand to because it's quite cheap the strings are always really good on there so i'd recommend that too as for the pattern as i've said before you're keeping it simple with these beats so simple you know one half step higher than the other because we're just following the root notes and then just played it on three different octaves and that's pretty much it so this is what the string sounds like And there we have it. As you can see, it layers nicely with the pad, complements it really well. So sound selection is very much important in this whole process. And for effects again, I've got myself a basic EQ, cutting off all the lows and ducking a frequency I wasn't a fan of and boosting a frequency that I did like. And then last but not least, I added, of course, some more reverb just to increase the ambience. As for the stereo separation, I did it around 36%, pretty much the same as the pad because I wanted them both within the kind of same field of stereo because they complement each other well. I thought it just sounded good. Next up, we got ourselves an instance of Expand 2, and I'm using a preset called The Dentist. And if I'm not wrong, this is, yet yeah, from the hard leads, as you guys could see. So all I did was just place this lead pattern down. Very simple, but as you can see again, we are using notes that we have used previously. And again, as I've stated many times, you can see that they're a part of this whole one semitone apart kind of little thing you know giving it that tension giving it that dark atmosphere that we like from these detroit beats and for a bit of variation all i did was pull this note back from here down to here and just place this little note as a little accent so when you hear it play now it gives it a bit of a wobbly bouncy vibe so this is what the lead sounds like
And there we have it. As you can see, sounds really dope. It's not too in your face as well with the lead. I kind of use it as like a nice little bit of ear candy to say. But for effects, we're starting off with a fruity panomatic just to get the sound bouncing off the right, you know, giving the whole melody a bit more of a bounce. Then we got to have the basic EQ cutting off all the lows. And last but not least, some reverb. A bit of reverb, you know, drowning the sound so it's not too harsh and in your face. As for stereo separation, because I had this as ear candy, I stereo separated it to the max, so 100%. And it just sounds really dope. You can also really, really tell when you have headphones on, so I highly recommend watching these tutorials with your headphones so you can really see why stereo separation gets used and why I find it quite important. And now, last but not least, for the melodic component, we've got ourselves the instance of Piano V3, and I'm using the preset called American Home Clean. It's just a nice sounding piano, and that's why I used it. So, for the pattern, we've got ourselves just again following the root notes, you know, keeping it simple and dark because that's what all Detroit beats are to the core. So, as I've just stated, simple dark following these notes that are one semitone apart yet again and i've just layered them by an octave because you know giving it a bit more thickness and depth and the last thing you need to know is i've kind of got this pattern bouncing out how an 808 pattern would bounce of course as you can see from the keys with the way they're placed and where they are placed now before i play the melody the effects for this piano are the eq of course because you know cutting out all the lows and ducking a frequency i'm not liking and a bit of reverb again you know just to give it a bit of ambience there i separated the piano around 60 percent and then the last thing i did was just render the whole melody out turned it into a loop and all i did was just take it down three semitones so we're going from an a sharp minor down to a g minor and now this is what the final loop sounds like and there we have it folks super dope super dope melody but now it's time to get into the drums. So, of course, with all drum patterns, the first thing I want to go through is the snare. Usually, I'd go between the clap and the snare for Detroit beats. Just depends what vibe you're going for. But like this is a bit of a darker vibe, I prefer the snare. And also, as you can see from the snare pattern, it's very simple. I just place it on a third measure of every beat. However, right here and right here, I just place an extra snare to give it a bit more of an extra bounce. And then for the hi-hats, we got ourselves a simple two-step. So now, it's time to hit what the snare and hi-hat sounds like. And there we have it. And now, of course, it's time to go through the 808 and the kick. So first thing you need to know about the 808s, we've got ourselves this nice little pattern, of course, following the new root notes, because remember, we took it down three semitones. So in the D and D sharp is the root note. Got ourselves a nice little bounce, as you can see here. And then that's quite a bit of space for the second half. And then for a bit of variation, when I looped over this four bar, as you can see here, we got ourselves a nice little extra note coming in, just to really, you know, bit of variation, simple as. And then the other thing I did to my 808 and kick, is to max out my velocities and you may be wondering why i do that and what that is well first of all this is what it is click control a and the next thing you want to do is use your right scroller wheel and then these little lines at the bottom should hit the very very top of the ceiling the reason i do this to both my 808s and my kick is because it makes it sound harder gives it a punchier sound makes it more appealing to producers and artists that hear your beats and overall just makes it sound more trap let me just show you quickly the kick pattern so for the kick it's essentially just like the 808 pattern except instead of having it in different notes we've just kept it all at c of course because it's a kick so without further ado this is what the 808 sounds like And there we have it. Now, to really make this Detroit beat, of course, I am using the drum sounds from the free kit down below, but these drum sounds are really important because they're perks, really iconic Detroit perks, but I'm gonna walk you through them right now. First of all, we got ourselves this nice little pattern, repeating itself, of course, every four bar. And the sound that I'm using is this perk here. As you guys can hear, we all recognize that perk, so I just repeat this every four bar. Then the next perk we got ourselves is called the Vibes perk, and this is what it sounds like. We've all heard it, of course, but from what you can see here, this is the pattern we've laid out and we just repeat it, of course, every four bar. And next up, we got ourselves this pattern that repeats every eight bar and it's essentially just a crash. It's a nice little Detroit crash and it sounds like this. And there we have it. And then last but not least, I got myself a little cowbell, just threw it in there. It repeats every four bar yet again and this is what it sounds like. So now, without further ado, this is what the full Detroit beat sounds like.
And folks, that is the full beat. But before we wrap it up, let me walk you guys through the beat composition. So when you look at it, it might look like a bit of a crazy pattern, but it's quite simple. For the intro, we've got ourselves a 16 bar intro. First of all, we're playing just the essential sample. First of all, we're playing the original melody that we made when it was at its original pitch. And then we take it down to the sample pitch, which is three semitones slower and we introduce the crash with it. It gives it a nice little dark vibe because when you hear a sample and then you just instantly shift the pitch, it just sounds really dope. So I just like it. As for the chorus, from what we could see here, it's essentially the same as the intro instrument wise. And then I introduce a lead that we had playing before in the second half of the chorus. And as for the drums, we're playing all of them together within the second half, apart from the crash, of course, because I just introduced that at the start of every chorus. But for the beginning of the chorus, I didn't have the little vibes kind of perk. So you know, a bit of variation, keeping it interesting. The first part of the verse, as you can see, of course, we've taken away the pad sound, we've introduced the piano, and then we've just kept a few perks, introduced the crash again. But then we have the 808 playing without the kick, just so people are aware, slash the artist is aware. It's the verse section now introduced here. We're moving away from the chorus. Now we're in the second part of the verse, where I would like to call it like the peak of the verse, which is when the artist trying goes really hard. As you can see, I've not introduced the pad, but I've got my piano and everything else playing. Then for the drums, I've pretty much reintroduced a whole lot apart from the crash and then last but not least in the verse we've got ourselves a pre-hook which is the last part of the verse of course i call it a pre-hook and it also indicates to the artist that yo we're about to go into the chorus so kind of build it up from here so the way i did this and to indicate it was i've got the hi-hats coming in barely i've literally got the kick and the snare playing no other instruments for the drums and then i've reintroduced the pad kept the violin kept the piano and then of course all i did was just rinse and repeat so it goes chorus once, verse section, verse section once, chorus twice, verse section twice, and then of course the final chorus. And there you guys have it. Full Detroit beat, how to make it, how to arrange it, and how to make some, of course, sauce. I hope you guys have taken some stuff from this. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe as per usual. I love all the love you guys give. Really appreciate it always. And of course, have a great week. Peace.